Okay. I'm uh... Okay, I'm going to see if it is going live on Facebook, waiting for the video. <clears throat>
School is back, and Verizon is here to help. We're supporting millions of students by getting them online. Alright, so I love this side. I'm not sure where it goes. Okay. Hey guys, it is Kat. Um, my name is Kathy Parker. I am the founder of I Rock My Scars, and I am a two-time breast cancer survivor, a rebel, a daughter, a sister, a mother, a aunt, a cousin. Um, I found myself in life always being the overachiever or feeling like I was never ever good enough. So people always ask me, why do I work so hard? Or um, where do I get my drag from? Um, I was probably 20, yeah, I was 21 when I had my daughter. I just graduated from college. And at that time, you know, you think you know everything about life and clearly, I didn't know enough, right? Um, so I had some speed bumps. I call them speed bumps because they went really fast. Um, life has its way of making you who you are today. And I call that pain points. So I'll tell anybody, um, pain helps me grow because it pushes me in an area that I wasn't expecting. And through my pain points, I really just found out that, I, you know, everybody just wants to be loved, right? Everybody wants to be loved. And um, that brought me to working, 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 and working more and more. Um, I did not think that I would be working as hard. I had to turn my fan on because it's awful hot. Oh, <laughs> menopause, they have me going like, ah. Um, I'm going to see if I can join my Instagram to us real quick. And I may have to tell the story over, so bear with me. <laughs> That's the thing about this live, this live, baby. Can't take it back. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I forgot to go live on Instagram. Um, today, I just kind of wanted to uh, talk about how I started I Rock My Scars. Um, yes, you know I'm a two-time breast cancer survivor. By now, you should know if you follow me. And um, I just really believe in having transparency because we grow up um, not being able to share who we are, what we do, and our real stories because we feel like people would judge us. You know, we grow up feeling that way. Um, and it may be, you know, how your parents taught you how to be or just a fear of rejection, right? And so um, what's up, everybody? So through my journey, and I'll tell you, I mean, I'll tell anybody, like people look at the, the result that I am now today and they'll be like, man, she got it easy or I mean, she got it going on. But somehow we forget the story before and in the middle and I always like to be transparent about the before and the middle, because I do believe 
I'm getting here to where I'm at. And I'm not where I want to be at, but I'm comfortable. And I'm only comfortable because I really feel that um, I have learned who I truly am. And I can see a vision of where I want to be at, right? So, you know, when you have that, and then you learn about speaking affirmations, you learn about you being in control of your destiny. You wake up in the morning a little different when you step out the bed. You're not angry with the world. You're not mad because you're really just taking on um, what you know is yours. And as I went through my journey, I definitely was not a workaholic. I was a person who thought that I was going to um, marry my college sweetheart. And I had a beautiful daughter by him. Um, love, love, love her. Um, and then life happened, right? We all know that is life happens. You find out that you don't have it figured out and that the real world is nothing like it was in high school. So from 21 to, I would say like 30, right? I was just trying to figure life out because um, through that time, and I told you my hiccups and my speed bumps, single parent, right? Um, no job. Um, eventually I got a job um, through my degree and just wasn't what I really wanted, but I learned how to go from being a manager to being in charge and then being director of that company, right? For Virginia, which is great, but I just knew that wasn't what I would be doing because every day I went to work, I just did not like my boss, right? I um, encountered like major sexism, racism, classism, I mean, probably all the isms, right? And what happened was I was working, I'll never forget, I was working two full-time jobs in Richmond, driving from Virginia Beach. And if you don't know what that's at, that's like a four hour um, day. And um, through that journey, um, I learned that when God is ready, <laughs> you believe in divine intervention, you have to listen. If not, like he's going to totally remove you and your feelings are going to be hurt. And so during that time, um, yeah, my feelings was definitely hurt. I lost my job that I had for 20, 20 something years. That's all I knew from um, college. And I said to myself, like, man, how in the world is my company going to let me go? And that's basically what it is. They found a Fugazi reason uh, for 20 years or whatever. Um, man, I was crying. I was hurt. I was like, how can um, someone have so much power over my life again? And so I found myself in, a, in another position again with, this, with different circumstances, but the same scenario, right? And what I mean by that is it was like, I gave somebody else control over my life to make decisions. And based off of that, I became stressed when the outcome wasn't what I knew it was, right? Or what I wanted it to be, I'm sorry. So losing my job, and this is when cancer um, happened, maybe like a year before that. So this job actually let me go during my treatment. So that meant um, I was gonna lose my insurance, right? And they're like, oh, we're going to do a favor for you. We're going to allow your insurance to, to go for another 90 days. Well, <laughs> 90 days wasn't doing nothing for me because the journey of cancer and being in remission never ends, um, never does. And so I felt myself stressed out, uh, going crazy. And I was on like sleep medications. I, I tell people I understand what Michael Jackson meant when he was like, I just want to sleep. Because you feel like life itself is taking over you and you do not have any control. Well, what I had to come to learn is um, you never have control anyway. Like, even though, you know, um, you could plan your day, you could want your day to go a certain way, you don't have control. And so when I learned that, um, I kind of understood that God is in control and I'm just here for the journey. And I'll never forget when I was 18, I had um, had to speak in front of this class and um, I had to write a paper and my paper was on my, my body is a vessel. I'm just here for the ride. I didn't know at 18 that 
that would be so uh, important today, right? Because once I understood that um, I just embrace the environment around me and I take in that, um, I no longer was stressed, right? So when people say to me, like, how could this happen and you don't have, like, an emotional response, um, they have, like, that label as a disorder somewhere in the psychology book, but um, I don't fit that disorder. But I try to not take on other people's emotions, and um, I also try to vent when things happen so I don't fester that into my energy. So... Um, that's something else. So as, as that journey continued, because um, again, I like to go with my hiccups, right? Um, I had to move out of where I was living um, when I was, let me back up, when I was 18, 21. Um, I was homeless probably for maybe like a month. Um, so literally me and my daughter slept in the car. And um, I can laugh today because I'm just like, wow, even when I'm saying it out loud now and just reviewing where I was and where I'm now, it's, I don't really allow my circumstances to fit who I am. And I think that's important because a lot of times we find ourselves um, finding reasons or excuses that we cannot elevate. And I think when we do that, the, the thing that happens is our mental capacity is no longer stable, right? So you find yourself um, doubting who you know that you are, you know? And then once you put that in the universe and atmosphere, it becomes that. So if you say like, man, I'm broke because you have $100 left, um, you start to feel like you're broke. You start looking like you're broke. You start um, being stressed, you know? Um, you start not caring about your car or your maintenance, the maintenance of your body, things like that. And so it's very important, even if you feel like life is sucky, <laughs> right? If it's not right, if you feel down, um, you have to believe. And we tell kids every day that um, it's hard for them to believe or that they shouldn't believe in you know, things they can't see. But that's the most exciting visual thing that you can do as an adult is to see beyond what you can see now and just visualize going beyond what you thought you were. So um, after that sea bump happened, so I was homeless, then I lost my job during cancer. And I still have this little young, beautiful kid that I'm like, man, I really want her to um, look up to her mother, right? And at no point does a child say that you're a horrible parent, right? It's more of what we set for ourselves. And after, after that, um, I literally had to say to myself, am I going to fight or am I going to fight, right? And so I decided to take control back over my life and um, really I started to write. I started to draw. And um, I don't know if you guys can see the character down here, but so that was me going through um, breast cancer. And I felt like I was still a warrior. I felt like um, I deserved to come out with a banger and to show the world that just because I had cancer and came back twice, that it didn't defeat me, right? And so I think sometimes, a lot of times we look at life as we're being defeated. And you're not, you're just going through a pain point, right? And that pain point may apply pressure. You may feel that um, you have no out. And I'll tell people all day, um, going through cancer, if you've never been through it, um, you can't comprehend, you know? You, can, you cannot imagine the things that you're thinking and feeling. And people always say like, oh, going to be better. Thank God you're alive. You know, oh, it's going to get better and better. Um, sometimes it's like it never does because it's always something else. You know, and people say, oh, it's going to get better. You know, girl, I mean, I've, I was diagnosed 2014 and still to this day, you still have to go to appointments. You still have to get your bones scanned. 
Um, I know for me, I don't really complain or uh, say a lot about what I'm going through because I'm kind of just a person I just push through. But I'll give you an example. Even today, I'm healthy. All my um, laughs came back great. And it is like, so my whole left, well, my right arm, because my left arm really is like, can't really go a lot, but that's where I had surgery. So my whole right arm goes totally numb. And so it wakes me out of my sleep. And that happens every night, right? And yes, I can take Neurotin. I don't want to be back on medication. I can take that. It's because my nerve ending is crazy. I didn't even have surgery in this arm, but I had it in this one. And so also like your nails are tingling. Now, I've been to chemo over three years and still you have signs and symptoms. So I think a lot of times why I'm like breaking the story through is because if you've never been through it, then you have to watch your your language when speaking to someone who's gone through something and not only cancer, right? And because a lot of times we don't mean to re-injure or have a reoccurring trauma caused by you um, to that person, but it happened, you know? So a person's prayer may not be your prayer. And a lot of times I think we want people to be here, but that person may, you know, be saying, hey, I don't want to be here. Um, you would never understand. Um, you won't. So, I mean, the best thing you can do is ask that person how to comfort them, right? Um, so after I was homeless, I was at a job that really didn't like me. Um, I was fired from that job, and then I didn't have insurance. I was struggling trying to figure out how I was going to pay uh, $600 a month for insurance. That was crazy. And then um, I took my 401k, and I was like, I'm cashing out because I can't stress. I've already been through the worst part I feel like a person has to go through. And all I know is to rock out with my socks out. <laughs> so I had a chance for probably three or four months to start modeling, right? People don't know this, but I had a chance to start modeling. Um, and a guy was like, all that you've been through, um, that you've encountered, how in the world and you still want to show your body or um, embrace what you've been through. And so I was like, what? Why, why should not? Like, this is how God made me, right? I was sexy before, I'm sexy during, I'm sexy after. And people would say like, oh, that's cockiness. It's not, it's, it's because um, if you don't believe in yourself, then people say, oh, you got a little self-esteem. But as soon as you say, like, I am the best, people get so crazy. They're like, oh, you're stuck up. Oh, you're whatever. No. You are supposed to be confident in who you are. You're supposed to love who you are. Now, you may not love how your body looks. You may not even, I mean, I always tell people, I have, like, um, buck teeth. But I like sometimes smiling. I do my teeth like this. <laughs> so you only can see the front too. I just think it's comical because we all can find something we don't like about ourselves and beat ourselves up for it. But it's a person right beside you probably don't like, you know, their earlobes or something. And you're talking about how you don't have eyebrows. So anyway, I digress. Um, after after I went on my three or four months hiatus and start modeling, um, I learned something about myself that I really didn't care what people thought about me. Now, I already knew I didn't care, but after I modeled, I mean, I'm 5'2", I'm very hippie, uh, very curvy girl, um, wild curly hair, I usually wear it in the fro, and I was standing beside women who were 6'3", 6'1", skinny, tall, and legs long, and I was bald. <laughs> I was bald, thick, and ready to go. 
And at that moment, I knew I really didn't care. I really didn't care what people thought about me because they needed to see that cancer is ugly. They need to know the facts. But in true cat style, I didn't even show them I was different. So a lot of women were intimidated by this 5'2 hippie girl coming through. And someone said, it's not what you've been through. It's when you walk in and demand and command the attention of a room. It's because you know who you are. And nobody sitting in a chair can tell you your worth. And when I went on that stage, <laughs> I'm silly, I'm like, no one can tell me that I didn't do cancer. No one can tell me that my fight wasn't hard enough and that I don't deserve to be up here like everybody else. Because you haven't even been through half of what I've been through. Okay, so during that time, I met a lot of friends. I did um, Cats Back. I did um, Catwalk often on my videos, which I think I'm gonna start back up. Um, and so many people embraced it, right? And I learned so much. I even learned how people try to take advantage of survivors during the model, right? Because as a survivor going through trauma, you are more susceptible to going through trauma again and sooner and quicker because your, your walls are let down and you're just looking for love and you're looking for comfort. And so um, looking back at these young girls, young women, even older women, uh, being taken advantage of by photographers, by the owner of the company. Um, I was like, nah, like, I want to protect survivors. I want to protect them because number one, um, being honest and having honor some, sometimes have like gone through the window. Um, but I wanted to stand for something different. And I wanted to defend the people who felt like they didn't have advocates. Because I used to work for a job like that where you couldn't speak up or you couldn't you know, say anything because you were fearful that you were gonna lose your job. Now, I just don't care. <laughs> so I work for myself, right? Um, because you start to realize that the fight that you've been through prepared you to be a warrior. You already went through the trenches. Right? And so now whatever you face in the world couldn't even be worse than that because you already beat it. And um, I wrapped my scars started in 2018 because um, I wasn't gonna be ashamed of what happened to me. I refused. And so I always wore like low cut shirts because you know I'm a party girl, it's a party. And um, I just didn't want to keep on, um, I didn't want to keep on, you like being bold in the summer, girl. I like to be bold all year long. <laughs> um, I didn't want to hide who I was and what happened to me. And when I first started, I rock my scars. I had my I rock my scars bathing suit. It was a two piece. So I have scars underneath um, my stomach. It goes from side to side. And a lot of people would think that it was from a C-section. Um, I had people even joke that and say like, oh shit, a C-section, she doesn't know and tell you. And you know, even though it was like a harmless joke, it still was something like, I have an idea what I've been through. And you shouldn't even say that. Um, but so my bathing suit was, you know, the, for the bra, my scars were showing. And I was like, I don't care. I mean, I, I had every look there was because people were trying to figure out what just happened to me, that I have a, a bad plastic surgeon. Um, because when you look at the rest of my body, you probably feel like, oh, she had work done on her whole body, which I haven't. But um, yeah, so I got the looks from people like, man, she got messed up on the table. At that time, I knew I rocked my scars was gonna be something that I could not imagine it being because um, I was like, man, people need to be educated. People need to be um, lifted. And people need to know they're sexy. Because just because you don't want to wear your two-piece 
I'm not gonna stop wearing my two piece because I'm a big girl and you know I just like to be free. So I'm not gonna stop because you're uncomfortable with it. And having that attitude and carrying that over to a brand, man, made me so free. Like I was liberated. Then um, I met some people who actually wanted to take over. I rock my scars, um, but they told me that this company wasn't going to be anything because I wasn't going to make any money off of it. Well, I'm a nonprofit. I rock my scars as a nonprofit. Our team is a nonprofit, um, and you can see like I have other businesses. So I was like, man, like why do you always have to make money off of something? Like, I literally want women to know that they're beautiful. And I want men to know that you are nothing less than um, viable in this, in this world. So I was rejected, rejected, denied, denied. Opportunities to work with people. Opportunities to um, put my logos on things and to promote my brand. Well, I was so used to the cycle of abuse, right? To say like, oh, what else did you expect? You deserved it, right? Or you're not worth it. And your mental is one thing that is so strong that if you don't control it, it will consume you. And I was beating myself up so much, becoming um, crazy, basically. Because I did not want to fail again. I did not want to fail again. And so I felt like the world was on my shoulders because it was so many survivors, so many people who are going through it that needed I Rock My Star. That's the, the world was going to come to an end if I didn't exist. Um, I mean, it's still going. But um, I didn't listen to the naysayers or the haters. I didn't. Um, I continued to rebrand and rebrand. And then I was just like, man, I'm going to tell my truth. I'm going to tell my story. I'm going to be transparent. I'm going to be honest. And I'm not going to be fearful. I'm not going to be fearful of what my family thinks, my friends think, the public thinks. And I'm going to tell you, my family was a hard one. You know, they still probably are saying, like, she just wants to show her body. Have you seen her? But I just don't care, right? Because once you face death, I don't care if it was a bullet, cancer, heart attack, you come back a different person. You come back as a rebel. You come back harder. You come back like you just don't care anymore because you know what you've already been through. So you're not trying to go back there. You're trying to look to the future. And if people can't get over themselves because they weren't the ones who were there getting chemo, in their arm every week, every three days. They weren't the ones who was throwing up in a toilet every, every two to three days, um, not being able to eat, not being able to smell because it means you vomit. Um, feeling like razor blades are going through your arms. And when you start to think and contemplate on you're less than a human, because you wanna be honest with the world so you can help someone else out, um, it starts to say you don't care because you want to save lives, right? <laughs> Go girl. You want to save lives. You want to um, empower young women, young girls, young boys to know that they are worth it, that no matter what you've been through, it doesn't make you who you are. It only involves you, but it only makes you better. It's when we do not allow those circumstances to become um, permanent, right? We use them to climb. And so I took my pain and made it a purpose. And through that, I did some healing. <laughs> um, and maybe like within the last year to now, I really can see my vision of I Rock My Scars. And that is that it's pain, it's purpose, it's purpose for your pain. And when you channel that and put that as your passion, you can't go wrong, right? It's when we try to invent someone that we're not. Uh, and I just really refuse to 
sugarcoat and hide or not say who I am and not say what I've been through. Because when you do that, you're always walking on eggshells because you're so fearful of what people say about you. And I'm just not that person. I used to be, but not anymore. Um, so after a year ago, I started getting inquiries, right, about just about people's stories. So no matter where I went to, people always would tell me their story. And it didn't have to be about breast cancer. It could be about, you know, losing a baby. You know, I had a lady that just sat in a um, restaurant with my family and she was serving us and she told us about her story about losing her baby because she had some baby footprints on her as a tattoo and I inquired about it. And she was so happy that I asked, right? And I think that's what it is. Sometimes you don't even ask a stranger, how are you? Or smile. That's tough. Because if you have to go through life not smiling because um, you're angry or you're upset about something, that takes more energy and it puts all these wrinkles on your face. <laughs> you don't want that. Um, but being true to who you are and learning to love that person. I will tell anyone, um, a lot of times people say like, oh, you don't have any problem. You know, you are good. And a lot of times I'd be like, no, I'm really not. I just know how to learn how to manage and cope. And that's what I wanted for my counseling services. Because a lot of times children grow up to be adults who do not know how to cope. And that leads into us putting a Band-Aid in Neil's form on gunshot wounds. And the reason why I say that is because when we don't talk about things and when we don't respond and react to how things really are, we are not true to ourselves, right? We are only doing a temporary fix. And so when I counsel a lot of kids, I realize that the parents have done a temporary fix. And not that they're bad parents, it's that they're only trying to do the best they know how or what they have. And a lot of times the children find themselves having to make excuses for an adult's behavior. Um, that's a tough spot to be in. So I wanted to use I Rock My Scars to heal, heal broken people, to heal and to give passion and purpose. And when you learn that fashion, music, art, and food are all universal, they're all things that people enjoy um, in some type of way. And when you teach people how to utilize those four things, have I rock. And art, music, fashion, and food are things that help me get through because you have to learn how to do your makeup. You had to learn how to either maneuver, manipulate, or don't wear a wig, right? You have to learn how to find your inner beauty. And, and somehow you don't have a choice about your outside because you draw eyebrows on, but they don't stay on there forever. Put a wig on, but it hurts if you glue it down. <laughs> you know, your weight goes up and down. So you're forced to love, to, to learn to love the person you are in the inside. And the step that we miss is that we don't do that. And so when you go through trauma and you don't take the time out to go back to the things that you used to love to do before the trauma happened, you will lose yourself. And you become more depressed, stressed out, anxiety-based. Uh, and I hear more and more people say they have anxiety, which may be true. But if you continue to speak things against your life, things against who you are, that you know on the inside, you have this, I tell people, they, they'll say like, oh man, you, you know, you're so confident. And I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> I tap into the inner cat and I become the person that, um, I know it's there, but she's not always there, right? And so when you tap into that rebel, 
you don't really care anymore about what people think or say about you because you're like, honey, honey, <laughs> I am who I am and now who you say I am. And go with it. Um, and go with it. It becomes revolutionary. It becomes like you're so liberated that nobody can tell you, even if they say it, you don't care, right? Even if they say it, you don't care. Um, but you're, you're liberated and you learn how to live with what you have. Because when I look at cancer, hey honey, when I look at cancer, I look at um, who I used to be, right? And I didn't really like that girl. I mean, she was fly and cute and a rebel, but I didn't really like that girl. Because she never spoke up for herself. She always went along with, with whatever because she didn't really, I didn't really like confrontation. And um, now who I am, I speak up. I advocate for myself. I advocate for others. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care that your car is made. I don't care that you are an owner of 20 companies or the mayor or the president. What I care about is women's rights. What I care about is advocating for people with disabilities. What I care about is making sure that we continue to love each other. So when you learn that um, nobody else matters, that's it. You become liberated. And when you learn to not allow other people's energy to enter your circle, you become liberated. And so that brought me to I Rock My Stars. And I not only wanted to be about breast cancer, I not only wanted to be about um, normal trauma, but I wanted to be about any trauma that you have encountered that bothers you. And then to teach you how to maneuver and to manipulate and just love yourself. Sometimes we don't love ourselves enough to say we're worth it. And I'll tell you, how are you expecting someone else to love you being broken if you don't feel that you're worth it? You don't know that you're still here for a purpose through your pain. Nobody else can tell you today, I'm saying it to you. You're worth it. You wake up in the morning, look in the mirror, say, I'm worth it. Whatever that is, you say, I'm worth it. Because it's when we start negotiating our character that we feel like we're not worth it, that we don't deserve better. And somehow we actually negotiate with people that are below our standard. And those usually are the people who take advantage of this survivor, the warrior. People that see that they can tap into your hurt and your pain. And so we have to make sure that here, the first. So I rock my scars. We are branching out. Um, as you know, this will be the international show on Saturdays at um, 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. We will invite guests as we do every Wednesday. But today I just wanted to get on here just to tell you just about myself because um, it's been a while, two years is a lot. And, and within the two years, I'm gonna tell you, even from not paying my bills and having bad credit to now um, rebuilding my credit and rebuilding my legacy, um, I'm proud of myself, I have to say that. Um, I've encountered losing my father this year, which is tough. Um, but I look at my family and I say, man, we're gonna be okay. <laughs> as long as we have each other, we're going to be okay. Um, and even if you feel like you're going through too much that you can't handle, you've been through words, right? It starts happening to um, how did you get through that? You use the same tools that you used to get through that to get through this. It got you through. You may have to revise it a little bit, but. Right. So I just want to continue to extend myself as an entrepreneur, as a mother, as a sister, as an aunt, as a business owner, um, to you and be a resource. So if you need donations, if you need 
support. If you need anyone, um, we have all kinds of resources. We are rebranding our website to include all our resources so we can reach more people. But that's it, guys. I have talked to Holy in your head today. Um, I just want to encourage you. I just want you to know that you are worth it and um, you deserve it. So use your pain as a purpose and not as a pressure point to go back. And to know that you are the best, better than the rest, nothing less as you would be Bye. Peace, love, and blessings, guys. Rock on. Hey, yo. I don't know what happens.